Today I am presenting Edith Spurlock Sampson, who was an American judge, civil rights activist, and lawyer. She was also the first African American to join the United Nations under the Truman Presidency. Edith Spurlock Sampson was born October 13, 1901 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She was one of seven kids. Her family struggled financially. She understood that her father's salary was not enough to take care of the whole family. This opened her eyes to social justice issues and would be one of her focuses in her career. Edith did well in school, which gave her the opportunity to go to New York University. She knew that her way out of poverty was to get an education. It was in, at New York University that Samson majored in social work. It wasn't long into her college career that one of her professors suggested she become a lawyer rather than a social worker. She had done so well in his criminology class that he thought it would be a better option for her. She would eventually pursue a law degree. While studying in New York, she married Rufus Sampson in the early 1920s. She would eventually move to Chicago to become a social worker. Edith adopted two of her sister's children after her unexpected death. During this time, Samson was getting a law degree from Loyola University. It would become a challenge for Samson because she now had to take night classes to take care of the children. This opened her eyes to another social issue. How could women go to school and also take care of children? Despite the struggle, Edith would become one of the first women to get a master's degree in law from Loyola University. In 1934, Edith would pass the bar exam and would continue her practice in the Supreme Court. Not long after she began to work, she divorced her husband. In 1947, she became an assistant state attorney for Cook County. In 1948, she would join the Round the World Tour. It gave 26 prominent Americans to travel around the world and answer questions. In India, she was asked what it was like to be an African American in America. She replied, I would rather be a Negro in America than a citizen in any other land. This trip would give Samson attention from the government. This trip in particular would end up giving Edith the confidence when it came to talking about race relations in America. It would also give her the opportunity to give speeches across the country, particularly about communism, which she was very against. In 1950, President Truman would appoint Samson to be a U.S. delegate to the United Nations. She was the first African-American to do this. She was also the first African-American woman to serve as a judge of the Municipal Court of Chicago. After the around the world trip, Edith was criticized for not talking about racism in America. A lot of Americans thought that she had missed an opportunity. Despite this, Edith got a lot of attention in America, positive and negative. She would also gain the courage to talk about race relations around the country. This was also how she became involved in the civil rights movement. Giving speeches on race equality opened her eyes to the injustices that African American, the African American community was facing. Hearing about sit-ins in the deep, deep South would change her view on peaceful protest. She argued that her generation had not done enough and that peaceful protest was critical to progressive change. This experience would change Edith as a person. She commended college students for speaking out against racism. She also apologized for not having the courage herself to speak out against injustices in the past. After Edith's experience with the civil rights movement, she would leave her government position to join the civil rights movement. 
she realized it was difficult for her to work in the government and dedicate herself to her passion, which was the civil rights movement. This was an uncomfortable transition for her because she didn't know a lot about the movement and how she fit into it. Edith would find her place in the civil rights movement by giving speeches. She talked about her faith in the American system. She would typically speak at schools to the younger generations, encouraging them to speak out. Edith would also speak from her own experiences. She would discuss how she came from a working class family in which her father was a dishwasher and made something of herself through perseverance and hard work. She would discuss the importance of freedom, a right that not everyone in the country had. In 1962, Edith would leave her position in the civil rights movement. She was elected to be a judge on the Chicago Municipal Court. She became the first African-American female to be elected to this position by popular vote. Edith understood that working class families often struggled. Her experience growing up and her participation in the civil rights movement inspired her to do more work for working class families. In 1977, Edith opened the Edith Spurlock Sampson apartment complex. This apartment complex was created to provide housing for in lower income families and still exists today. Edith would retire from her position as a judge in 1978 and would pass away in 1979, only a year later. Edith Spurlock Sampson was an outspoken advocate for civil rights and equality. She spent the majority of her life fighting for the unheard and pushed the needle forward in regards to human and civil rights. And these are my references. Thank you for listening.